Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. I have gotten uh, an interesting email from a uh, friend there uh, here on Israeli News Live. Uh, emailed me a video from uh, William Mont and asked me if uh, his video was actually accurate. And William was speaking about dozens of soldiers, Russian generals actually, were, were actually killed in a car bomb in a side of Syria and wanted to know was this information correct? Is it credible or what? And unfortunately, from what we can gather thus far, uh, the information does seem to be at least credible as far as it's being reported, both in Russian media sources as well as in uh, other media sources as well. I guess at the time when uh, uh, Bill brought his report out, it had not been uh, airing yet on some of the mainstream media. Uh, we have done some of our own research. There has actually been two accounts. Uh, I know that uh, others have reported on this as well. Uh, but I want to bring you up to speed on what is going on, what these things are all about. There is uh, reports here uh, that uh, dozens of Russian generals in Syria were killed after a car bomb hits uh, their military base. This was on February 28, uh, 2016 reported by Jerusalem Post there. Now, I'm going to kind of take you back and forth on some things and share with you my only my thoughts as well about this. I do question whether or not there was actually dozens of generals killed. Now, if this is also at a Russian military base. The photo that you see on the screen here where they're claiming these are some of the uh, generals that were killed how would they be able to get on the base and get the general's bodies to begin with? The, the photo, by the way, in my opinion, does appear to be photoshopped, but I don't uh, discount the fact that there could have definitely been Russian uh, soldiers, perhaps even high-ranking officers that were killed in this attack, possibly even a general or two as well. Uh, let's just kind of look at some of the things that are going on, and, and, and I will say as well, if there is truth, if there has been... Uh, several high-ranking Russian officers that were killed, especially in the line of generals, you can definitely count that Russia is going to retaliate in a way that Turkey has never seen before. And this could escalate even further, bringing the United States in. And we'll go into that as well, because we know Russia has always said that it was used, used nuclear weapons if the West gets involved in these conflicts. Let's go ahead and look at what uh, the Jerusalem Post stated on here. Dozens of Russian generals at a military base near the eastern Syria, Syrian city of Latkia were killed Sunday afternoon in a deadly car bomb attack committed by two opposition factions, the Harar al-Sham and Bayan movement. Syrian opposition groups reported on Wednesday. If I'm not mistaken, these are groups that are actually supported by the United States. According to the media office of Harar al-Sham, the two factions in coordination with local jihadists who were located at the Russian military base decided to bomb the car after they observed a gathering of senior Russian generals at the military base. A Harar al-Sham claims that dozens of Russian generals were killed and injured in the explosion, according to the movement. The announcement of the terror attack was delayed until Wednesday to ensure that the jihadists who committed the attack returned safely to opposition territories. Either way, the United States or Turkey, either one, are definitely the backers of these groups here. Let me continue on in the same report from Jerusalem Post. It says the military base that was hit by the car bomb is considered one of the most important military centers for the Russian forces on the Syrian coast, located some 15 kilometers from Latkia. The belated announcement of the car bombing came shortly before the Syrian truce was scheduled to start on Saturday. Russian and the U.S. have already announced that the ceasefire were not, uh, will not apply to ISIS and al-Nursa Front, but in light of this terror attack, the Russia might demand the exclusion of the Hara al-Sham as well. you got to remember who is the one backing al-Hara al-Sham al when it comes to that. Now, let me go take you a little bit back here to 2014. I want to share with you something that uh, President Putin said then to give you an idea of how serious President Putin is uh, in regarding to the, the events that are transpiring here. This is in an article on the Pepperdome. 
uh, entitled Vladimir Putin Responds to Obama's Hostile Acts Warns of Nuclear Consequences on October 16th of 2014. And this was some statements that he made here. It's futile for the U.S. and its allies to blackmail Russia over the Ukraine crisis. President Vladimir Putin said in a newspaper interview today, Russians, Russia's partners should remember the risk involved in disputes between nuclear powers, allegedly Vladimir Putin states. He accused Barack Obama of adopting a hostile approach and naming Russia as a threat to the world in the U.S. president's speech to the United Nations General Assembly on September the 24th. We do know that's a fact. We hope that our partners will realize the futility of attempts to blackmail Russia and remember that consequences uh, discord between major nuclear powers could bring for, st strategic st uh, for strategic stability, Putin told Serbia's Politica newspaper in the eve of his visit to the Balkan nation today. Putin said that Obama had identified Russian aggression in Europe as one of three major threats facing humanity alongside the Ebola virus in Islamic State. That's funny. The United States is the one that created the Islamic State. Together with the sanctions against entire sectors of our economy, this approach can be called nothing but hostile. Allegedly, Vladimir Putin is quoted as saying, according to the paper that they uh, cited this from. Now, Let's step it up just a little bit more here to this year in February the 19th of 2016. And this, by the way, is going to really uh, send some serious shockwaves because this is letting you know just how serious Russia is about tactical nukes from an extremely reliable source. Russia just threatened Turkey with nuclear weapons. It was the title of the article on the Russian Insider, February 19th of 2016. Reports say a source close to Putin claims Russia warned Erdogan of readiness to use tactical nuclear weapons to defend Russia's strike force in Syria from Turkish attack. The U.S. investigative journalist Robert Perry has made an astonishing claim and on one that has gone completely unnoticed. He is reporting that the Russian government has warned Erdogan that Russia is prepared to use tactical nuclear weapons to defend its Syrian strike force from Turkish attacks. Uh, he goes on to say, and this is his exact word, speaking of Perry, the, uh, the American journalist that stated this, a source close to Russian President Vladimir Putin told me that the Russians have warned Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan that Moscow is prepared to use tactical nuclear weapons if necessary to save their troops in the face of Turkish-Saudi onslaught. Since Turkey is a member of NATO, any such conflict could quickly escalate into a full-scale nuclear confrontation. Now, this may be one of the reasons why Turkey is also demanding the United States lead the way in a ground operation. And the United States has also been considering, Paul Begley has reported on his own channel from sources that he has on the ground, uh, that they are, are aware that the United States is planning on sending 30,000 soldiers to the region. Now, I know Paul does know people in the military in the United States, so I do take his, uh, his words very credible in light of this, uh, the seriousness of this situation. Also went on to say in the Russian Insider, of course it is possible the source is making the story up or that he is not as close to Putin as Perry believes. However, on the 11th of February, 2016, Russia's Security Council held a meeting, uh, the public report of which is usually terse, while it's on the same day the Russian military reported to Putin about a series of military exercises arranged at short notice in their southern military district, which looked like they were intended to prepare the Russian military for a rapid action at short notice against Turkey should the need arise. Now, those of you that may not be aware, also in the country of Romania, or Armenia, excuse me, on the Turkish border there is where Russia has amassed some 70,000 troops, uh, or 7,000, I forget the exact number, we mentioned this in a broadcast the other day, you may recall that uh, as you go back in your mind to think about it there. So Russia has prepared a contingency on Turkey's, uh, on their, basically that would be their eastern border there, 
uh, uh, in the country of Armenia. Uh, also, this is uh, on the New Russian Spring. We're going back now to the 4th of uh, February. Uh, this is a Soviet Union-based media. This was actually in the Russian language. I took the time today to get it translated uh, just to be sure of what it was actually saying. This is in regards to a February 3rd attack also that was done on supposed Russian meeting there near Latkia. And supposedly the attack was done from the Turkish territory trying to kill more Russian generals. The claim in the article claims that up to eight Russian generals of the armed forces and seven officers from the same country have been killed. Such a statement was made by the media supporting the militants fighting the SAR. For example, the Turkish propaganda agency Andalou Post citing a source among the militants fighting in Latkia province. According to the Erdogan journalist, senior Russian and Syrian officers gathered for a council of war in the region of Turkmen Mountains where they were attacked by the rebels, meeting the military of the two countries held the evening of the February 3rd and her allegedly discussed the state of affairs in Latkia and the next military steps uh, for that particular province. Now, oddly enough, notice it is the rebel forces that carried out this attack. As a result of the attack on a group of officers of the armed opposition killed, they're calling, they're calling Russia the armed opposition, killed 15 soldiers, including four generals of Russia and four generals of the CAP. One of the killed Russian army officers, Lieutenant General, uh, on behalf of uh, the, it's actually Yuri, uh, Y-U-R-I is how you spell his name, uh, who coordinated the attack of the Turkmens. The other three were Russian generals with the rank of Major General, confidently declared Turkish propagandists. Now, so there is no backing that this is really, it was really, uh, uh, Russian generals in this attack either. There is, according to Russia though, they have refuted this claim here uh, about this. Let me just pull you up to date on that there. But anyway, uh, I thought I could have swore I had that. Let me just see real quick. Yes, according to Defense Ministry uh, on the Moscow Times, their uh, story related Defense Ministry confirms Russian military advisor was killed in Syria. Uh, this is what Russia says was killed. It was not a general, but an advisor. Russian Defense Ministry on Wednesday confirmed that one of its military advisors in Syria had been killed by mortar fire. The Interfax News Agency reported, although Turkish media cited unidentified sources in the Syrian opposition as saying Russia casualties included four generals. The advisor had been training Syrian uh, government troops in the use of modern weapons supplied under current state contracts on military technological cooperation. A defense ministry spokesman was quoted by Interfax as saying. Now, this is the actual video footage of the attack. Uh, I want to share with you the video footage that uh, appeared on Syrian, uh, a Syrian, it's actually the Syrian flag is flying in there, so I'm ass assuming this is a Syrian channel here, that you will be able to actually see the attack that was done. Again, according to some of the sources that we have uh, looked at this on in the Russian language, I looked at four different Russian language sources, uh, one from Russia itself, also one from the Ukraine uh, in the Russian language as well. All of the... Uh, uh, the footage or all the news stories that I was looking at on where they claim four Russian generals were killed, uh, they all are claiming the same thing and they're all saying that it does believe to be that the attack was made from the Turkish side of the border. Take a look at this video right here, it's very interesting. <laughs> Now, there again, uh, there, there are different sources that are claiming, uh, they're claiming uh, from the propaganda source there that the Syrian army has confirmed that this was an authentic video. Uh, you do hear the, the firing in the background though, and of course Russia says it was mortar fire. Uh, so you kind of can't, you kind of can't help but wonder, is the video actually, uh, 
if, if the footage is added of that tank missile going in there or was it actually a mortar fire that came in. Nonetheless, either way, all the different uh, sources are claiming that the fire did come from the Turkish side of the border which will only escalate tensions even more. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for watching there and be in prayer. I have to agree in one thing for sure, and that is if you do not know Yeshua, if you've not believed him, this is a time for really believing him. We are living in a very serious hour, friends, more serious than you could ever imagine. Uh, know the Lord. Know him for your own salvation. It's a serious time. I'm Stephen Benoit with Israeli News Live. Shalom.